I have here thermal paste. This is this is thermally conductive material that we will put between the body of our LED and the printed circuit board lying underneath it. So the LED has two legs, a positive leg and a negative leg, and I'll explain later how to determine which side is which. But on its base, it also has a large metal pad, which is meant to conduct heat away from the body of the LED. Incandescent lights emit heat much of their energy as infrared energy, so they radiate the heat. LEDs, on the other hand, do waste a lot of energy as heat. They aren't perfect. But because they don't radiate that energy as infrared light, they instead just heat up and you need to conduct the light away from the LED body. Because so much energy is concentrated in such a small area, it's very critical that you conduct heat away from this tiny area and spread it out as quickly as possible. As the LED heats up, it will conduct more, ele more electricity, which will cause it to heat up more leading to a positive feedback loop, um, which will end in the destruction of the LED if you don't keep it cool. This is also why you need a driver to regulate the amount of current flowing through the LED. So you have a lot of energy, a lot of power going through a very small area. So we'll apply thermal paste to these large circular pads. Probably we'll do it on the back of the LED itself. Easier to work with that way. The printed circuit board itself then has a, a metal backing, which is not electrically connected to anything else, but it is thermally connected. So we'll apply thermal paste to the back of this as well. And then screw that onto the base of the housing. Now this is just a large piece of aluminum with fins on it, so it's designed to radiate the heat away quickly. That said, if you do have your light and you leave it on high mode with no mo movement, no air movement, and you're just, say, indoors at room temperature, it will only take a few minutes for the light to become very hot. And in that case, the LEDs would start to degrade and become dimmer, and eventually they would burn out. So you need to be careful to not overheat your lights, but it's not a concern when you're in when you're normally riding. Alright, so have some paper towel handy in case you make a mess with the thermal paste. So we just stir it up a little bit. Sometimes it settles. All right, so before we can put our LEDs down, we need to know which side is positive and which side is negative. If you look very closely, there is a negative sign marked along the black edge of the LED. This is very difficult to see unless you have good eyes and know what you're looking for. It is indicated in the data sheet of the, of the LED as well. Um, it shows a diagram of the LED with the negative sign clearly marked there. So you can look along here and see a negative sign in the black. You can also see that there's a little split in this kind of proto leg of the LED on this side, and this side that little leg isn't doesn't have a split. 
This side with the split leg is the negative side. Don't rely on these um, to identify the negative and the positive unless you know that that's what the data sheet tells you. You can also test by applying a voltage to the LED to see which way it lights up, but you should apply just the bare minimum voltage to make the LED light up to avoid burning it out um, as well as to avoid damaging it from, from a reverse voltage that's too high. So now that I've identified which side is negative and which is positive, I'm going to apply just a thin layer of thermal paste to the back of the LED. So this thermal paste is only intended to fill in the air gaps caused by imperfections in the actual otherwise smooth surface. Do not put too much on because metal to metal does conduct heat better than the thermal paste itself, but the thermal paste fills in any air gaps So on the printed circuit board are marked positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we're going to be following that for our three LEDs going around the circle. You'll notice also that I'm not handling the LED with my fingers. You don't want to really touch this dome and get grease on it. It's also pretty fragile and you can knock it off uh, if you apply shear forces. So we're setting it down, kind of squeezing it down and squishing it around to make sure that it has good thermal contact. And then we're going to do the same with the other two, next two LEDs. So the negative leg of one LED should be connecting to the positive leg of the next LED. It's a bit of a tight fit down here. But we've got the three LEDs. We start out with a positive here, which isn't connected to anything right now, but will eventually connect to a wire, or a positive input wire from the, from the driver. Positive goes to the negative, starts out as the positive of this next LED, goes to its negative, which is the same as the positive of the third and final LED, which goes to its negative, which will eventually connect to a wire going to our driver. Now we want to solder our LEDs down. Make sure that they are flush with the board so that you have good thermal conductivity. And then we'll solder them in place so that they won't keep on sliding around or accidentally get knocked off. Now, once again, LEDs can be damaged by being overheated, so it's important that as you're soldering, you don't hold the soldering iron to the board or to the leg of the LED for more than a few seconds. The heat very quickly transfers through the leg of the LED into the, into the body of the LED. Uh, and you'll notice, now that we have it all thermally connected, the printed circuit board will also heat up quite rapidly.
if you're having difficulty soldering the legs down um, and it's taking more than just a two or three seconds, stop, wait for it to cool down, and then try again a second time. You want solder to flow up the leg of the LED as well as flow onto the pad of the printed circuit board. Only then will you have a proper connection. So now I've soldered all of the legs down. And our lens fits on top, just like that. So the next step is to apply the thermal paste to the base of our printed circuit board and then screw it into the body of our housing. Same process as before, being careful not to get any thermal paste on the top dome of the LEDs because that will interfere with, that, interfere with our light. Paint a thin layer of thermal paste onto the bottom of the board. Place it down. Oops. Then I'm going to line up the large hole with this gap in the board. Our wires will run through there. And then line up the three other holes in the printed circuit, circuit board with the three small holes in the housing. Well, that is where our screws will pass through. We're done with the thermal paste now. So we're going to put the lid back on so we don't make any more mess. All right, we're going to take use the smallest screws that came with our light housing and we're going to we're going to screw down the printed circuit board <laughs> 